So today we're going to be doing a quick setup guide on how to get your new NCIX PC configured out of the box. As you may or may not know, NCIX, besides selling components, also sells completely assembled desktop systems. So if you go to the NCIX site and click on the Buy a PC link up at the top, it'll take you to this URL where you can configure the system according to your specification. But if you're watching this, the odds are you already bought one and you're wondering what to do with it. So to test this out, to see what a good job my team actually does of building these systems, packing them and shipping them, I ordered one. So we're going to unbox this baby and we're going to show you exactly how to get it set up right out of the box. So as you can see our shipping team tapes the heck out of the box. They've got it taped along every possible seam and then they've cross taped. I had to break most of the tape off camera because there's no way. It took me a while. So I just left one more piece of tape on there and hopefully... So you can see why breaking tape takes me a long time because I'm, I, I clearly have trouble with this. It's like a specific, you know, inability to do that. Okay, so I'm opening this on its side and I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out for us, but the first thing I found is my invoice. Okay, so that lists all of the components of the PC, the price, the date I ordered, all that good stuff. Okay, your usual NCIX invoice. Then I find some bubble wrap. Okay, let's get that out of the way so you can see in here pretty good. And then I find, I just ordered a basic keyboard because since it's like a mock order, what am I going to do? Order like a high-end keyboard? Doesn't make sense. And then I find the test report. Okay, so this shows all of the tests that they ran on my system. Shows another, again, list of all of the parts that they installed as well as giving a little sign off that it was built by one person and then inspected by another one. Very cool. All right. Then we have some bubbles, and included with all NCIX systems are all of the boxes of the individual components. So I have a box for one GTX 260, I've got an XFi Extreme Gamer sound card, I've got another GTX 260, because this is an SLI system. Then I have, ah, okay, more stuff in here. Then I have an MSI P55 GD65 motherboard. And this is about to get really, really awkward because all that's left in here is the stuff below the system ah, and the system itself. Can you still see that okay? All right, so then I have the box for my CPU cooler. And okay, so we got a Noctua box there. Then we have the mouse, which is, it's an OEM mouse, so they've packed it in bubble tape, or bubble wrap for me, and then taped it shut. Very considerate. And the last thing in here, I feel like I'm like, in a cave or something, this box is huge, is a Corsair HX1000 1000 watt power supply. So this is built in an Antec 1200 by the looks of things. And the next thing we're going to do on our next shot here is, yeah, there's the whole, there's everything. And he's showing the messy tech tips room too. The next thing we're going to do is take this out and have a look at what a job the assembly team did. So inside we found the case manual, which you might need actually if you want to make any upgrades, upgrade your hard drive because it'll walk you through how to do that. Okay, so that we won't need. And then we find the case wrapped in a sheet of plastic. You can see that they've left the cover still on the window, so you can rest assured that your window won't be damaged or scrap scratched in shipping. Now, one thing that you can see through the window that you wouldn't be able to see if you had a case with an opaque side panel is that there's actually a bubble wrap inside of the case. Now, you should be aware that it needs to be removed before you power on the PC. So you see this warning sticker here over the power plug on your power supply. That is indicating to you that you should read this and follow the instructions before you turn on your new computer. Okay, so what you need to do is open up the side panel, which, uh-oh, that's uh, pretty tight. We're going to have to end this shot now. Okay, so now that I'm properly armed with a screwdriver, I can actually get the screws out of the back panel. So you want to take the side panel off, being careful not to scratch it or damage it in any other way when you put it down, and then remove all of the bubble packing from the inside of the computer. Now this is installed because in the event that the system is jarred or dropped during shipping, it's possible that certain components can come loose or potentially um, damage other parts of the system. So say for example heavy heat sinks that are installed on the CPU. If the system is dropped and there's a lot of force put on the on the CPU socket it could break loose and then in order to prevent that from causing additional damage maybe to your video cards or your motherboard or whatever else we pack the system full of bubbles so that you won't at least have everything damaged when it arrives. So you want to do a quick visual inspection inside make sure that there's nothing that stands out as 
uh, as come, having come loose, it's probably a good idea to do a quick check on the major power cables. For example, your 24 pin here, I'm going to get the cameraman to zoom in, have a look at what I'm doing. So just give them a quick push to make sure that they didn't come out during shipping. Same goes for your 8 pin up at the very top corner here. So I'm just giving that a quick push, make sure that it didn't come off, give the CPU heatsink a bit of a tug. PCI Express connectors on the video cards, just give the video cards a bit of a push. PCI Express connectors a bit of a push. Make sure that nothing got unseated during shipping. I mean, you can see they do install zip ties around the memory, around the VGA cards to make sure that nothing happens, but you never know. Shipping, anything can happen. Power supply, same thing. Everything seems to be good to go, so we can put the side panel back on and we can actually fire up the system now. So now the system's completely unboxed. We've taken out the protective packaging inside. We're almost ready to plug everything in, but something that you should probably check for really quick is find the motherboard box as well as the power supply box inside the main shipping box. And inside there, you will sometimes find some of the accessories or packages that would have been too small to just leave loose. So for example, in this baggie, we have um, an instruction manual for our DVD drive. We've got the bay cover that was used by our DVD drive, so any extras that they took off while they were assembling the system. We've got all of our motherboard accessories, including a crossfire bridge, um, some extra cables, anything that the assembly team didn't need, and we've also got our power cable for the back of the computer. There's the uh, package for the RAM, and that's all that we found inside the motherboard box. Inside the power supply box, where they often keep some of the accessories as well, although I'm not 100% sure if there's anything in here. Oh yeah, inside here, so we've got the CPU box, so you can see the genuine Intel, etc., etc. And then you've also got the cable that contains, or the cable, the bag that contains all of the other modular cables for the modular power supply. So if you're upgrading your computer in the future, you'll need this, and you'll also need the last box that's inside here, which is all of your case screws and case accessories. So any little upgrades you wanted to do in the future, you've got all the hardware and all the cables that you're gonna need. So because the systems we build are custom, it's not always color-coded correctly. So that means that cables might not exactly match up into what they're supposed to go in. So let's do a quick guide on which cables to install at the back of the PC to get going out of the box. First of all, you've got your power cable. This is the one that we found inside the motherboard box. So it goes into the wall and then into the back of your PC. For now, change the power switch to the big zero. Okay, so we'll change it to the line when we actually turn it on. The next thing you're gonna wanna plug in is your display cable. So we're gonna be using DVI, but you can see with these graphics cards, we could plug in HDMI, VGA, or DVI. Now with an SLI configuration, I normally use the top card, although there's no logical reason for that. You could actually plug your DVI connection into either of the DVI connectors, and it would work just fine. All right, so the next thing we're gonna plug in is audio. So you can see I'm using a headset here, which is speakers and a mic. So the green one is for the speakers, and then the pink one is for the mic. But wait, you can see that there are actually two sets of audio ports on the back of this computer. One up here, and one down here because this computer has an add-in sound card. So this is where we run into something that I mentioned, where the color coding isn't exactly right. So the green one goes to the green, but you can see the little mic icon next to the white one. So that is actually where the pink plug is gonna go. Okay, so after rebooting, our network connection is all set up. You can see that we're booting into Windows 7 Home Premium and we're gonna go right to the Windows desktop, which the first thing you'll notice about it is that it is very clean, free of additional clutter and icons. Now, because this is a gaming-oriented machine, our technicians have taken the time, and you can see that's also on our test report, to throw 3D Mark on the system and do a quick check to make sure that A, the graphics card and CPU are functioning correctly for gaming, say for example, because this is clearly a gaming machine, and they have also gone and enabled SLI by default, so you can make sure that you're getting all of your potential performance right out of the box. Now, the next thing that you'll notice is entirely clean and free of any additional toolbars encouraging you to shop wherever or whatever it is they want you to do. It goes straight to msn.com, which is the Windows 7 default. So we've installed zero bloatware on your new computer and we are very, very proud of it. Now, if you go to the NCIX site, Let's say, for example, you had any issues with the PC out of the box. You're going to want to get in touch with us. Just click on the Contact Us link here. Your system is covered by a one-year parts and labor warranty, so please do not hesitate to get in touch with us if you have any questions. And thank you for watching Tech Tips on how to set up your new NCIX PC.